Imagine this. You're browsing the internet late one night, tired but feeling that familiar urge to just mindlessly skim through memes, tweets, forum threads, whatever it is this time. But as you're scrolling, you spot something that strikes an unusual chord within you. Yet, you're not sure what the image even shows. It's some creature, that much is clear, but you can't tell what it is, other than that it kind of resembles a dog. Not knowing what to make of it, you just move on, but some pocket of your brain hones in on it. It's probably just time to go to sleep. But the next morning, you wake up from a dream about the creature, along with visions of words and phrases that you know deep down are connected to the photo. But no matter how much web searching you do, you can't find any information or even repostings of the photo online, as though it never really existed to begin with. Eventually though, whether or not it ever existed on the internet is irrelevant to you, because it does exist in your brain now. The dreams persist, the monster's torment goes on, and somehow, deep down inside, the one thing you're sure of is that the only way for the eternal nightmare to end is for you to send the photo to someone else, burdening another person with your suffering, and continuing the cycle. Ask yourself, would you be able to do it? Would you be able to deal with the image on your own and save others from the same fate? Or would you give in to the creature's demands, save yourself, and spread the word? Hey guys, thanks to a bunch of requests, today I'm going to talk about SmileDog, also known as Smile.jpg or Smile.dog. Smile Dog is honestly probably right up there with Jeff the Killer as being one of the most famous creepypasta images of all time, though in this case there are actually two different images commonly associated with the story, along with a whole host of other variations out there, and there's a lot of confusion about which version came first. However, during my investigation for this video, I learned a lot and even conducted an interview with someone who I believe is the story and image's original creator. So first off, what is the story? And how did it start? Right off the bat, this is something that most creepypasta websites either get slightly wrong or just don't even touch on. As countless witnesses have explained, the original story of Smile Dog was posted in a 4chan thread, but there's usually some disagreement about when exactly it first came into the world. After doing a lot of digging, however, I've actually managed to get my hands on archives of the original thread, and it actually came from the beginning of 2009, on January 7th. Let's take a look at the story itself. You've probably read variations of it before, but since the story has been twisted and distorted over the years through reposts, I think it's important that we read through the original version of the tale to clarify what the story was meant to be. The thread began with the following anonymous post, accompanied with this photo of a floppy disk. Hello? Can anyone here tell me about something called Smile.dog or Smile.jpg? A friend of mine said something about it once and mentioned this board. Thirteen minutes later, after no reply, they posted again. Please, if anyone could help me with this, I would appreciate it. Google isn't turning up anything. And finally, twenty-four minutes later, again with no reply, they made another post. Please? This could be pretty important. Maybe this will help. It's from my friend's notes, and it's how I found this place. They then shared a paragraph excerpt from what they were talking about, describing an image that doesn't appear on the internet and has strange effects on those who see it. This grabbed a few people's attention, and after this back and forth went on for a little while longer, the creator of the thread decided to share the full contents of his friend's notes. 
I will now read, in its entirety, what he posted next. The Curious Case of Smile.jpg by J.M.L. I first met in person with Mary E. in the summer of 2007. I had arranged with her husband of 15 years, Terence, to see her for an interview. Mary had initially agreed, since I was not a newsman, but rather an amateur writer, gathering information for a few early college assignments, and, if all went according to plan, some pieces of fiction. We scheduled the interview for a particular weekend when I was in Chicago on unrelated business, but at the last moment, Mary changed her mind and locked herself in the couple's bedroom, refusing to meet with me. For half an hour, I sat with Terence as we camped outside the bedroom door, I listening and taking notes, while he attempted fruitlessly to calm his wife. The things Mary said made little sense, but fit with the pattern I was expecting. Though I could not see her, I could tell from her voice that she was crying, and more often than not, her objections to speaking with me centered around an incoherent diatribe on her dreams, her nightmares. Terence apologized profusely when we ceased the exercise, and I did my best to take it in stride. Recall that I wasn't a reporter in search of a story, but merely a curious young man in search of information. Besides, I thought at the time, I could perhaps find another, similar case, if I put my mind and resources to it. Mary E. was the sysop for a small Chicago-based bulletin board system in 1992, when she first encountered Smile.jpg, and her life changed forever. She and Terrence had been married for only five months. Mary was one of an estimated 400 people who saw the image when it was posted as a hyperlink on the BBS, though she is the only one who has spoken openly about the experience. The rest have remained anonymous, or are, perhaps, dead. In 2005, when I was only in 10th grade, Smile.jpg was first brought to my attention by my burgeoning interest in web-based phenomena. Mary was the most often cited victim of what is sometimes referred to as Smile.dog, the being Smile.jpg is reputed to display. What caught my interest, other than the obvious macabre elements of the cyber legend, and my proclivity toward such things, was the sheer lack of information, usually to the point that people don't believe it even exists other than as a rumor or a hoax. It is unique because, though the entire phenomenon centers on a picture file, that file is nowhere to be found on the internet. Certainly many photo-manipulated simulacra litter the web, showing up with the most frequency on sites such as the image board 4chan, particularly the X-focused paranormal subboard. It is suspected these are fakes because they do not have the effect the true smile.jpg is believed to have namely, sudden onset temporal lobe epilepsy and acute anxiety. This purported reaction in the viewer is one of the reasons the phantom-like smile.jpg is regarded with such disdain, since it is patently absurd. Though, depending on whom you ask, the reluctance to acknowledge smile.jpg's existence might be just as much out of fear as it is out of disbelief. Neither Smile.jpg nor Smile.dog is mentioned anywhere on Wikipedia, though the website features articles on other, perhaps more scandalous shock sites, such as Goatsy, also known as Hello.jpg, or Two Girls One Cup. Any attempt to create a page pertaining to Smile.jpg is summarily deleted by any of the encyclopedia's many admins. Encounters with Smile.jpg are the stuff of internet legend. Mary E.'s story is not unique. There are unverified rumors of Smile.jpg showing up in the early days of Usenet, and even one persistent tale that in 2002, a hacker flooded the forums of humor and satire website Something Awful 
with a deluge of Smile.dog pictures, rendering almost half the forum's users at the time epileptic. It is also said that in the mid to late 90s that Smile.jpg circulated on Usenet and as an attachment of a chain email with the subject line, Smile, God loves you. Yet, despite the huge exposure these stunts would generate, there are very few people who admit to having experienced any of them, and no trace of the file or any link has ever been discovered. Those who claim to have seen Smile.jpg often weakly joke that they were far too busy to save a copy of the picture to their hard drive. However, all alleged victims offer the same description of the photo. A dog-like creature, usually described as appearing similar to a Siberian husky, illuminated by the flash of the camera, sits in a dim room. The only background detail that is visible being a human hand extending from the darkness, near the left side of the frame. The hand is empty, but is usually described as beckoning. Of course, most attention is given to the dog, or dog creature, as some victims are more certain than others about what they claim to have seen. The muzzle of the beast is reputedly split into a wide grin, revealing two rows of very white, very straight, very sharp, very human-looking teeth. This is, of course, not a description given immediately after viewing the picture, but rather a recollection of the victims, who claim to have seen the picture endlessly repeated in their mind's eye during the time they are, in reality, having epileptic fits. These fits are reported to continue indeterminably, often while the victims sleep, resulting in very vivid and disturbing nightmares. These may be treated with medication, though in some cases it is more effective than others. Mary E., I assumed, was not on effective medication. That was why, after my visit to her apartment in 2007, I sent out feelers to several folklore and urban legend-oriented news groups, websites, and mailing lists, hoping to find the name of a supposed victim of Smile.jpg who felt more interested in talking about his experiences. For a time, nothing happened, and at length I forgot completely about my pursuits, since I had begun my freshman year of college and was quite busy. Mary contacted me via email, however, near the beginning of March 2008. To JML, from Mary E. Subject, Last Summer's Interview. Dear Mr. L, I'm incredibly sorry about my behavior last summer when you came to interview me. I hope you understand that it was no fault of yours, but rather my own problems that led me to act out as I did. I realized that I could have handled the situation more decorously, however, I hope you will forgive me. At the time, I was afraid. You see, for 15 years I have been haunted by smile.jpg. Smile.dog comes to me in my sleep every night. I know that sounds silly, but it's true. There is an ineffable quality about my dreams, my nightmares, that make them completely unlike any real dreams I've ever had. I do not move and do not speak. I simply look ahead and the only thing ahead of me is the scene from that horrible picture. I see the beckoning hand and I see smile.dog. It talks to me. It is not a dog, of course, though I'm not quite sure what it really is. It tells me it will leave me alone if only I do as it asks. All I must do, it says, is spread the word. That is how it phrases its demands, and I, I know exactly what it means. It wants me to show it to someone else. And I, I could. The week after my incident, I received in the mail a manila envelope with no return address. Inside was only a three and a half inch floppy diskette. Without having to check, I knew precisely what was on it. I thought for a long time about my options. I could show it to a stranger, a coworker. I could even show it to Terence, as much as the idea disgusted me. And what would happen then? Well. If smile.dog kept its word, I could sleep. Yet, if it lied, what would I do? And who was to say that something worse would not come for me if I did as the creature asked? 
So I did nothing for 15 years, though I kept the diskette hidden amongst my things. Every night for 15 years, Smile.dog has come to me in my sleep and demanded that I spread the word. For 15 years, I have stood strong, though there have been hard times. Many of my fellow victims on the BBS forum where I first encountered Smile.jpg stopped posting. I heard some of them committed suicide. Others remained completely silent, simply disappearing off the face of the web. They are the ones I worry about the most. I sincerely hope you'll forgive me, Mr. L, but last summer when you contacted me and my husband about an interview, I was near the breaking point. I decided I was going to give you the floppy diskette. I did not care if Smile.dog was lying or not. I wanted it to end. You were a stranger, someone I had no connection with, and I thought I would not feel sorrow when you took the diskette as part of your research and sealed your fate. Before you arrived, I realized what I was doing was plotting to ruin your life. I could not stand the thought, and in fact, I still cannot. I am ashamed, Mr. L, and, and I hope this warning will dissuade you from further investigation of Smile.jpg. You may in time encounter someone who is, if not weaker than I, then wholly more depraved. Someone who will not hesitate to follow Smile.dog's orders. Stop while you are still whole. Sincerely, Mary E. Terence contacted me later that month with the news that his wife had killed herself. While cleaning up the various things she'd left behind, closing email accounts and the like, he happened upon the above message. He was a man in shambles. He wept as he told me to listen to his wife's advice. He'd found the diskette, he revealed, and burned it until it was nothing but a stinking pile of blackened plastic. The part that most disturbed him, however, was how the diskette had hissed as it melted. Like some sort of animal, he said. I will admit that I was a little uncertain about how to respond to this. At first I thought perhaps it was a joke, with the couple belatedly playing with the situation in order to get a rise out of me. A quick check of several Chicago newspapers' online obituaries, however, proved that Mary E. was indeed dead. There was, of course, no mention of suicide in the article. I decided that, for a time at least, I would not further pursue the subject of Smile.jpg, especially since I had finals coming up at the end of May. But the world has odd ways of testing us. Almost a full year after I'd returned from my disastrous interview with Mary E., I received another email. To JML from El Zahir 82. Subject, Smile. Hello. I found your email address through a mailing list. Your profile said you are interested in Smile Dog. I have saw it. It is not as bad as everyone says. I have sent it to you here. Just spreading the word. Smiley face. The final line chilled me to the bone. According to my email client, there was one file attachment called Naturally, smile.jpg. I considered downloading it for some time. It was most likely a fake, I imagined, and even if it weren't, I was never wholly convinced of smile.jpg's peculiar powers. Mary E.'s account had shaken me, yes, but she was probably mentally unbalanced anyway. After all, how could a simple image do what smile.jpg was said to accomplish? What sort of creature was it that could break one's mind with only the power of the eye. But if such things were patently absurd, then why did the legend exist at all? If I downloaded the image, if I looked at it, and if Mary turned out to be correct, if Smile.dog came to me in my dreams demanding that I spread the word, what would I do? Would I live my life as Mary had, fighting against the urge to give in until I died? Or would I simply spread the word, eager to be put to rest? And if I chose the latter route, how could I do it? Whom would I burden in turn? If I went through with my earlier intention to write a short article about Smile.jpg, I decided I could attach it as evidence, 
and anyone who read the article, anyone who took interest, would be affected. But even assuming the smile.jpg attached to the email was genuine, would I be capricious enough to save myself in that manner? Could I spread the word? Attached to the final post was the image of the strange dog-like creature, smile.jpg. This is another detail that most repostings of the creepypasta get wrong, what the original image was. Contrary to what other websites might say, the original smile.jpg from the thread that started it all was the image you're seeing right now. You can see the dog-like creature with its straight, human-like teeth, and although you might miss it at first, you can see the beckoning hand in the dark, just underneath the left curtain in the background. The image also looks very red, notably. As I mentioned earlier, there are other variations of this image that started cropping up after the image and the story went viral. The most famous of the parodies is this one. The quality is much grainier, and the creature actually looks much more like a husky, with the human-like teeth being a little bit more subtle. The dog does look a lot more angry and deranged in this one, though. You can once again see the hand on the left, though in this version, the hand looks less like it's beckoning, and more like it's just reaching out for something. There's a common misconception that the grainy image appeared first, and that the red image appeared as the result of someone pasting a freaky smile over it and recoloring it. But looking closely at the two images side by side makes it pretty clear that this can't be the case. Not only are the hand and curtains totally different, but the position and the shape of the creatures themselves are different too. To me, it makes more sense to assume that both versions were created from scratch independently of each other, though one obviously had to be inspired by the other. And sure enough, most witnesses I've been able to track down have supported this explanation. When the creepypasta was first posted, it received some criticism from people who found the red image to be too goofy and over the top, and for the fact that it doesn't really look anything like a dog. According to people who claim to have been on 4chan at the time, including this especially vivid recollection I found in a comment on Midnight Crick's video, the grainy image originated from an anonymous user who claimed that they could make their own, creepier version of the image described in the story. That user posted the husky Polaroid shortly afterwards. I couldn't find any archives of that thread, however, so I can't say with 100% certainty if these accounts are true, but it makes sense. The red image was posted first, along with the story, and someone who didn't like the extreme way it was deep fried tried to one-up the creator by creating their own version that they felt was more subtle and clever. A handful of users ended up preferring that version, so they attached it to the end of the story in some reposts, and now there are many people who falsely believe that that one is the original. The anonymous nature of 4chan, along with the fact that they don't save archives, means it's likely impossible to verify some details for certain, but it's definitely plausible, and the evidence we have points to this being the case. I haven't been able to find any evidence at all of the grainy image being older than the red one in the story. So the main question of the video is this. Where did the two images actually come from? Over the years since the story became a creepypasta staple, many people have searched for the base images that were used to make them. It's hard to make out much detail in the grainy image though, so most progress has been made with the red image. First off, where the dog part of the image comes from? I actually know, for a fact, what it's from. For years, it's been widely believed that the face of the dog originates from this photo of Sure enough, a Siberian Husky, which was a meme image that was circulating around message boards around the time that the creepypasta was posted. Take a look at the photo alongside the dog creature. Ignoring the obviously edited teeth, it's pretty much a perfect match. And I'm here to say that this is indeed the correct source. You're probably wondering, though, why I'm so certain. We'll get to that in a second, but for now, let's move on to the curtains. 
This is another part of the image that people have nailed down with very little room for doubt. Feast your eyes on this. This one's even more obvious at first glance. It's basically another perfect match. I searched around the internet to figure out what this photo's from, and the oldest posting I could find of it is from early 2008. It looks like it was used as the cover artwork for an EP by the band Balam Akab. Seriously? Another music-related origin? It's like the third time in a row this has happened. Why does this keep happening? The dog's smile, however, is where things start to get more obscure. If you do a Google image search for creepy smile or whatever, a result appears with teeth that are clearly identical to the mouth in smile.jpg. But the problem is, I can't find any information on the origins of this image, and whenever I look into it, it seems more likely that whoever made this image just took the smile from smile.jpg, and not the other way around. There have also been various stock photos of teeth that people think look like they could have been stretched into the smile that we all know and love. This photo in particular comes up a lot, but while some of the details do look pretty similar, it's definitely not a perfect match. You can clearly see a gap between the top two teeth in the red image, and that's missing in this one. I guess I can't totally rule out the possibility that the image's creator just added other subtle changes in post but I don't know. As for other details, like the creature's body and the hand in the background, I haven't seen anyone come up with any plausible theories as to what they could be. The body is kind of just a garbled mess of color that could have been added with the paint tool, and the arm, and the shadowy shape to the left of it, are so obscured by the darkness that they could really have been sourced from any number of things. Now let's talk about the grainy image. This one there's very little information about, and I could find very few theories on how it may have been made. And I think I know why. The image is so distorted and low res, and so little detail can be clearly made out, that I honestly think it could just be a painting, or some other kind of art, and was deliberately fried to hide that fact. This is sort of circumstantially supported by the fact that there really aren't many theories about what it could have been edited from. While I was doing some research for this video, the only person I could find presenting evidence of what they believed the original was is this Reddit user from a few months back, claiming pretty confidently that the grainy image's dog came from this photo, and that the window in the background is a mirrored version of this. Personally, I'm not really convinced of either. The window looks completely off, especially since it doesn't include the picture frames on the windowsill that you can see in the dog image. The dog is honestly not a terrible match, but is far from perfect. There are a number of details that just don't align nicely, but I guess I can't completely rule out the possibility that it was just heavily edited. I don't have anything else to show off as possible origins for other aspects of the images, but believe it or not, that's not where the trail entirely ends. You see, while most repostings of the creepypasta attribute the story to anonymous, it only took a little bit of digging to find someone who's been claiming authorship of both the original image and the story. But while you might be tempted to call BS, and indeed most people do on the few other sources I've found that even acknowledge him, I actually found quite a bit of evidence in his favor. Enter J. Michael Lutz, known on Twitter as Warren is Dead. He's involved in a lot of different projects, but his website describes himself as an academic, game designer, cultural critic, and general bon vivant. He's also a fairly experienced writer, and his website showcases a portfolio of various things he's written, including fiction, non-fiction essays on culture, and even academic papers including his PhD dissertation on Unhuman Encounters in Early Modern Drama. He doesn't actually talk much about Smile Dog on his website or on his Twitter, so many people have probably casually encountered his work without ever knowing that he's responsible for a widely known internet phenomenon, or at least claims to be. Let's closely examine what he's actually said. Like I said, he doesn't mention it much, but when he does, it's usually just to answer frequently asked questions about it, or even to imply that he's somewhat embarrassed by it. 
In a post from October 2019, he explained in detail why he wrote it. Smile Dog grew out of a few interrelated concerns. I've always been into horror fiction, and anomalous folklore, mythology, and things like that. As a writer, certain ideas or images stick in my mind, and a story grows around them. And for a long while, I'd been working over an idea, an image, really, of a horrible, dog-like creature that smiled with human teeth. Rather than work this diegetically into a story, I decided it would be interesting to make the image literally an image, and make that the subject of the story. At this time in my life, I was also reading a lot of creepypasta on 4chan's X-Board, and it occurred to me that the smile dog idea would work in that format. I'd read enough that I could reverse engineer the genre. At the time, it was all based in posting normally, as a real person telling the truth. Then, as the story went on, it became increasingly clear something else was happening, until you got to the big reveal at the end. I had also been reading a lot of the Argentine writer Jorge Luis Borges, who had a deep concern with the impact of fiction on reality, as well as the sort of malevolent and treacherous nature of language and narrative, and things like that. Borges' stories often feature a fictionalized version of himself as the narrator, which is why the narrator of Smile Dog, at least originally, was clearly a fictionalized version of myself, and why the original title, The Curious Case of Smile.jpg, is a little twee and mannered, etc. So, all of these ideas and dispositions come together, and I realized, with characteristic early 20s, too clever English major nihilism, that given the ecology of 4chan, it would be extremely easy to make a creepypasta that wasn't particularly good, but would be popular. All I had to do was take the core conceit of creepypasta, these pseudo-fictional stories meant to be occasionally reposted, and make the reposting of the story part of the story itself. Basically, that is, make a chain letter, or rip off the ring, whichever you prefer. So, as I said before, at the urging of my friends, I eventually posted the story to 4chan basically to see what happened, and it exceeded my expectations. In the same thread, he went on to clarify that the red image was the original version, and that he finds it funny when people falsely say that the grainy one is the original, or talk about how much better that version is for actually resembling a dog. As Lutz writes, One of my gambits with the original story was saying that the creature looked nothing like a dog, but people called it one anyway. It's that treachery of language thing I talk about up in the text post. A dog is close enough to whatever this thing really is. At the time of my original posting, people were truly freaking the fuck out over my picture. I've seen multiple folks say it's hard for them to look at. Which, again, is a thing that comes from the original story. Seeing this thing is supposed to be painful and disorienting. Now obviously, the original image couldn't work universally that way. And even in my original thread, there were people playing along, telling other posters that the image I put up wasn't even the real one. It's so cool to see how that's actually moved forward into the reader community. So, the creature's indescribability, its patent falseness and construction, get swapped out for more comprehensible things. It's literally just a dog that smiles now. But, because the words match, it gets taken as the original, and the original becomes the copy. It's true, after all. The story does explicitly state multiple times that the creature is clearly not a dog, and only kind of resembles one at first glance. This thread is not the only time Lutz has harped on the fact that the image isn't meant to actually be a dog. In an earlier post from July 2018, he responded to a repost of the grey image with, In the original story, I explicitly wrote that Smile Dog looks almost nothing like a dog, and people only call it a dog because that's the closest approximation. But because people on the internet have no reading comprehension, someone decided it needed to be a smiling husky. My original image was based on a photo of a husky, yeah, but then I manipulated it into the bright red pig face nightmare hell because that's the goddamn point. Those tweets probably give off the impression that he's annoyed about the misunderstanding, but in later tweets he actually seemed sort of appreciative of the confusion saying, I love that there are two of them and no one knows which is which. A unique smile dog in every home, I say. 
Furthermore, in a recent exchange between him and Midnight Crick, he compared the situation to a game of telephone, and said that the experience taught him a lot about how internet audiences tend to interpret information. So, going back to my earlier question, should we believe him? Well, right off the bat, there is a lot of circumstantial evidence in his favor, starting with his initials, JML, which matches the narrator of the original 4chan post and aligns with what Lutz said about how the narrator was sort of meant to be a fictionalized version of himself. Him consistently mentioning Borges as a huge inspiration is also interesting, because the email address of the final sender in the story is El Zahir, which is the name of one of Borges' stories. Plus, nothing about this guy really strikes me as the type to lie like this. Sure, I guess you could argue that he might be trying to get attention, so that he has more of a spotlight on his other work, but the reason I doubt that is because, again, he barely advertises it. And most of his following comes from other places. Okay, I admit that none of this evidence is airtight, so I decided to do something that's very in-brand for this channel, and reach out to him myself. I asked him if he could offer any proof of his authorship, fully expecting him to say no, and that we just have to take him by his word. But I was actually pleasantly surprised. The biggest piece of proof he offered to me was his personal Facebook profile. It turns out, a few months before he posted the story to 4chan, he put it on his college's web hosting server and shared it with his friends. Sure enough, that post dates to September 2008, and predates any other mention of the story or any of the images on the internet. Even more excitingly, he said that, after all these years, he still has the GIMP file, as well as all of the base images he used to create the original image in the first place. Though, I think this is where you guys might be a bit disappointed, because he is not interested in sharing them right now. In his own words, I don't share these widely in case I ever have to end up in court over this thing. Not for anything creepypasta fans might do, but because I know there are people in Hollywood who love to scoop up free and authorless IP and charge money for it. I'd much prefer Smile Dog freely remain in the hands of the creepypasta community, and I reserve these materials in case I need to fight for that. Normally, it annoys me when this sort of thing happens, but I actually do think his reasoning makes sense. Besides, he still admitted that people had tracked down, accurately, most of the original base images he used, which, in my opinion, at least partly sort of confirms some of the more obvious, accepted theories. And, as I'll explain in just a bit, he did end up actually confirming outright one of those sources to me, and sent me that image he used. But still though, I couldn't help myself from asking the follow-up question. When would he consider releasing everything? I think there may come a time in the next 5-10 to 10 years where the mystique is faded enough that I don't have to worry about it, and I have the opportunity to release those materials in a controlled way. So it's not completely out of the question. Additionally, he did mention that there is someone out there who's doing professional research into creepypasta, and that he might release the files for that person's sake if it ever comes to that. So don't get your hopes up, but there is a chance that we might be seeing those materials in the not too distant future. That's kinda where the discussion on the image ends, but since I was in contact with the author of one of the most famous creepypastas of all time, I figured I might as well, in typical KTB fashion, coyishly take questions from you guys to ask him. And he was kind enough to answer everything. When asked about how popular he thought the story would become, the most honest answer about what I expected is maybe a few people responding positively, and then mostly everyone else ignoring it. The internet's a busy place, and I didn't have any reason to think that this post in particular was going to catch people's imaginations. Until it did, somehow. When asked about how old he was when he wrote the story, I was about 20 years old when I wrote it. His favorite kind of coffee? Honestly, I will drink just about any type of coffee. I take it black, but lately have been adding a little maple syrup. Why is the dog always smiling? Is he watching clips of his favorite TV show or something? I do like to think he's having a grand old time. The literal answer is, I thought a dog creature smiling with human teeth would be a creepy image, 
even though a friend of mine told me it sounded pretty goofy. Well, guess who was right? In retrospect, I think we were actually both kinda right. As for whether or not he plans on doing anything else with the story or image in the future, I don't have plans to make sequels or more versions of the image. It's so much its own thing, and other people have done so much with it. What could I really add? Why did he choose to base the image on a Siberian husky specifically? I started with a husky because they have very striking eyes when they're looking at you face on, and I thought that might give the image some juice. At the time, there was an image that circulated on the boards of a husky looking into the camera when it flashed, meaning the tapetum lucidum are lit up red, and people have rightly clocked this as one of the inspirations slash elements. I used it in making my image. Since people have already cracked it, it doesn't seem like we need to keep up the mystery on this one. Aha! That's the part he confirmed, and that's why I said I was 100% certain on that earlier. What are Smile Dog's pronouns? In writing, I thought of Smile Dog as an it, but things have taken so many twists and turns since then that I imagine any and all pronouns are recognized by the beast. Does he think Smile Dog is a good doggy? Good enough at what he does. Scaring people and also somehow bringing them weird joy, I guess? And that's it for the questions I got. So now you know the full story of Smile Dog. At least what's currently knowable. I'll be patiently waiting for the day when he decides to release the rest of his files, but until then, I obviously have to throw a huge thanks to him for being kind enough to respond to all my emails and give such detailed answers to my questions. Aside from his Twitter and his website, both of which are linked in the description, he's currently with the group Ranged Touch, where he co-hosts podcasts such as Just King Things, where they are reading and reviewing every single Stephen King book in publication order, and Homestuck Made This World, which discusses some of the responses and cultural impacts surrounding Homestuck. I'll be linking their website in the description too, so check that out if those things interest you. Michael wasn't the only one who was a huge help with this video. I also need to give a big, big thank you to May and Hazel, Maisel, if you will, for voicing the emails in the story. I'm super grateful they were able to help. They definitely made that part of the video much better and so much more fun to edit. Both of them put out really good content themselves. May mainly does Twitch streams and posts VODs and clips to her channels, and Hazel does video essays, usually focused on anime, but there's a good variety of stuff in there as well. She also does music, and has an album coming up. I'm putting links to all their stuff in the description too, so go over there and let them know that they rock. I've also got to shout out Ebola Granola, who I've mentioned in previous videos. She knows a lot about Smile Dog, and helped me out with the research for this video. Even if she hadn't helped out though, I probably still would have mentioned her anyway, just because, just for the fact that she's hosting this really cool unfiction series called Chainmail Chasers that kind of focuses on the Smile Dog concept. So if you like the idea, and you want to see a series that kind of expands on it in a really unique and innovative way, go check that out. And really, that's all I've got to say. I guess I should also mention that the reason why the camera angles are kind of inconsistent in this video is because while I was editing it, the new webcam I ordered, the Logitech C920, came in and I used it to reshoot some of the things I needed to take other takes on and also film some of the things that I had not filmed yet, so that's why things are a little inconsistent. I probably should have reshot all of it, but I was kind of too lazy to do that and I wanted to get this video out by Halloween. But I even went and put on the same clothes that I wore for the first take of the footage, which, as I'm thinking about it now, I probably didn't need to do, because since I'm acknowledging it, then there was not really any point in me trying to be consistent for the viewer's sake. So I guess that doesn't make sense. I'm not a very smart YouTuber. Anyways, subscribe if you like the video, and if you have a request for something that you want me to do a video on in the future, leave a comment down below, or fill out the Google form, and I'll try to get to as many of those requests as I can. Anyways, that's all for today, and I hope you all have a happy Halloween. Bye bye